Today I'm talking about the 11 steps to buying a home with a realtor. I'm Angela Duong with Coldwell Banker Tuga Realtors and MadHomeJutah.com. And if this is your first time to our channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and hit that bell to be notified of each video that we post. I have worked with several home buyers throughout the years and many ask, what are the steps to buying a home? And what do I do next? If you are a first time home buyer, that is most likely going to be on your mind because you haven't bought a home before. Even some of my home sellers that make a move need a reminder or two about the entire buying process. In this video, you are going to learn 11 steps to home buying in the way that I guide my home buyers in Utah. Step one, do your research. To start the home buying process, do some research. My favorite way to research things is by Googling it. I absolutely love Google. So what should you research? Well, my ideal would be that you Google research and it brings you here, and then you wouldn't need to do any more researching, right? But in all seriousness, you are going to want to research and start researching real estate agents in your area and their home sales, the types of loans that are available to buy a home, um, mortgage companies in your local area, and of course, do a little research on the real estate market itself. Don't get too excited about one of the homes just yet though. You don't want your heart broken if you find out that you don't qualify for that dream home you found online. Step two, find the right real estate agent. If from all of the above you were only to research one thing, I would say research the realtors in your area. You may not realize this, but as a home buyer, choosing the right realtor is rather important. Buying a home is one of your biggest investments. You really don't want a real estate agent that doesn't know what they're doing to handle the biggest transaction of your life. You need a local realtor that knows the area you are looking to buy in. When you are looking for a real estate agent, you want to make sure they work their business full time. If they are part-time agents, then it's quite hard to be there for you 100%. Use Google search and search real estate agents and read their reviews and testimonials from past clients. That will give you an idea of what type of agent they are. Ensure they have a website of their own and it's up to date. That will help you show they stay active in the business. Step number three, talk to a mortgage lender and get pre-approved. Some may believe that you should talk to a mortgage lender first before speaking with a real estate agent. Either way is completely fine. As a realtor myself, I like to be able to meet with my buyers and give some suggestions of lenders I have worked with. When you have a real estate agent and a lender that work together regularly, it can make a huge difference in how the home buying process will go. Before you go out and view homes in person, it is very important to start the pre-qualification process. The loan officer will let you know how much house you can afford and approximately how much your mortgage payment will be. Some folks have a house payment they are comfortable with in mind, even if they qualify for more. The lender will be able to tell you the home price you can afford to stay within your preferred budget. When you speak with a lender, you can either get pre-qualified or pre-approved. The pre-qualification part is simple. You give the lender the basic information about you, along with your job history, hourly wages, and other things on the mortgage application. They will also pull your credit reports to make sure it's where it needs to be. So basically most of the information is just from what you tell them. Be as accurate as possible. To get a pre-approval, you take it a step further and give them the documents they need to fully verify the information you have provided. Some of the documents that you need to provide to the lender to get fully pre-approved are your last 30 days of check stubs, last two months of bank statements, last two years of your federal tax returns, last two years of your W-2s, and that's just to name a few. Depending on your personal situation, you may need to gather additional documentation like retirement account statements, divorce documents, and other things like that. Step number four, start your home search. Now that you know what you qualify for, it's time for the fun part, looking at homes in person. Discuss with your realtor what your needs and wants are. Focus more on the needs and think of your wants as a bonus. Because sometimes it can be hard to find everything you're looking for. Many times you have to compromise on some of your wants and focus on your needs. I have heard from many home buyers that they say their buyer agent isn't helping them find any homes to look at. Although your realtor should be keeping an eye out for your homes you may be interested in, it is very likely that you as the home buyer will find the home you are looking for. Realtors search for homes in the criteria you have told them to look at. 
but as a buyer, you're searching for yourself more frequently in your spare time. When you aren't finding what you're looking for, you will find yourself searching in other cities nearby, raising the price range if your lender approved you for more than you wanted to, or even the home style and characteristics. When searching for homes, use your realtor's website. That way, when you save your favorites, they will be able to see what homes interest you. Set up times with your realtor to go view the homes you are interested in, and keep searching until you find the home that feels right to you. Do not feel like you have to just pick a home. Sometimes finding the right home takes time. We have home buyers apologizing all the time for wasting our time to look at homes that aren't what they wanted once they saw it in person. This is our job and we are here to help you find your home that you will be happy with no matter how long it takes. Step number five, write an offer on the home you love. Once you find that perfect home, it is time to write an offer. Your realtor will have all the paperwork needed to get the ball rolling. We use state approved forms and will fill in the blanks and adjust the contract as needed in an addendum. The main document is the real estate purchase contract, also known as the rep seat. It will have all the details of the offer you would like to make. After you send over your offer, then it is a sit and wait time until the seller responds, which is usually between 24 and 48 hours, depending on what your realtor put as the response time. There is a chance that your offer might be accepted, but in many instances, the seller will counter offer with terms closer to what they are looking for. Your real estate agent will help you negotiate back and forth if needed to come to the terms that both you and the home sellers can be happy with. There are instances that you may not be able to come to terms, but don't let that deter you from the home buying process. That just means get back out there and find the home that you were meant to buy. Step number six, turning your earnest money. When you are writing up the offer with your real estate agent, you will have made a decision of how much earnest money you would be providing. Earnest money is basically showing your interest in the property. At this time, many home buyers in Utah are offering 500 to 1,000 and sometimes 2,000 in earnest money when making an offer. In Utah, the earnest money must be given to the real estate brokerage within four days of your offer being accepted. That money is then deposited into the real estate trust account and will sit there until your purchase is complete or the, you cancel the contract. In some instances, the brokerage you are working with may have elected to not have a trust account. In this case, your earnest money will be held at a title company. The best form of earnest money is a cashier's check or a personal check from your bank or credit union. That way the lender can track where the funds came from. Many home buyers ask if they can get their earnest money back if they cancel the contract. The answer to that is yes. As long as you've canceled the contract within your deadlines, you will be able to get your earnest money back. Step seven, do your due diligence and get a home inspection. One of your deadlines is the due diligence deadline. From the time you write the offer, you will have about two to three weeks, depending on the date of the contract, to do the due diligence on making sure the home is what you want. The seller will provide you with seller's disclosures, giving you details in what known problems they have had and fixed or updates they have made and things like that. There is a due diligence checklist that you will be given to go over the list and see what you want to check into, such as property lines, utility costs, square footage, the condition of, ho of the home, and many more. One of the most important tasks I would suggest is get a home inspection. A home inspector will spend two to three hours going through the home in detail. They will look at the structural components, climb up in the attic and onto the roof, and crawl into the crawl space. They check the plumbing, electrical, heating and air, foundation, and so many other things. After the home inspector is done, you will be able to go over the report with him in detail. They give insight on any major concerns and let you know of any general maintenance tips to keep the home up in tip-top shape. If you find there to be items in the report that you don't like, you can write up a seller repair addendum to ask sellers to fix those items. If the home inspection shows major repairs, you can cancel the contract altogether. Step eight, work with your lender and wait for appraisal. Now that you know you're happy with the condition of the home, be sure to continue to get any additional documents that you need to the lender as they ask for them. You will also need to send disclosures, whether in person or electronically. The disclosures will give you a breakdown of the closing costs, your interest rate, your estimated monthly payments, and your escrow account details. The lender will order the appraisal through a third-party service. This is to ensure that the appraiser is selected at random from a group of appraisers on their list. But what if the home doesn't appraise? That is another question I get asked. In most cases, the appraisal comes in fine, but if for some reason that it doesn't, you can try to renegotiate the purchase price 
down to actual appraised value with the seller. Step number nine, do your final walkthrough. As a buyer, you have the right to do a final walkthrough of the home before closing. You want to go in within a couple days of signing the closing documents. And if you found anything that to be unsatisfactory during your due diligence period and you request that the seller to make repairs, now is the time to check and make sure those repairs have been completed. Other than that, the main thing you are doing here is checking to make sure the home is still in the same condition it was when you made the offer. You don't want to find out after you move in that now there is a leak or the seller put a hole in the wall when moving furniture. And sometimes sellers will take shelves off the walls that you thought stayed because they were attached and you just want to clarify that anything attached is still there. Many times the seller hasn't moved out and won't be moving out until the very last minute. So sometimes this walkthrough can be hard because you're still seeing all their stuff. Step number 10, sign closing documents. Finally, the time has come. Now it's time to sign all those closing documents. The settlement date usually happens about 30 to 45 days after you've written the offer. In Utah, you will meet at the title company along with your real estate agent. The escrow officer at the title company will go over all the loan documents that you will need to sign. Be sure to work your signing hand because when buying a house, there is a lot of pages to sign, initial and date. But don't worry, when you sell, the stack is a lot smaller. After you and the seller sign the documents, then the title will take care of sending the documents back in to be checked. Money will be transferred to the right places, and then they will record the home into your name. Once it is in your name, the home is officially yours. From signing to owning the home, the closing can take as little as a few hours, but in most cases, it's gonna take closer to the 24 hours or the next afternoon. Step number 11, move into your new home. Other than making sure you have called to switch all the utilities, what is there to say here? The excitement of home ownership is amazing. So get moved in and enjoy your new home for many years to come. Just remember to keep the home well maintained. You never know when you might find yourself needing to sell. We've had people help to sell in less than a year. I hope that you found this video helpful. All areas have a lot more to them, but at least now you have an idea of what's gonna go down when buying a home. I can't stress enough about how important it is to find the right realtor when you start looking about purchasing a home. Do you need some help with your search? I have connections throughout the US and into the other countries. And if you would like me to find you a perfect realtor in your area, contact me, my information will be below, and I will point you in the right direction. Again, thank you for watching. And if this is your first time, please go ahead and click subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of all of our new videos coming out on Tuesday.